I was off on, this is just what I was taught. It was what I grew up at, but when I searched the scriptures, there was this humbling. Because I, you know, ultimately, as much as I want to hold on to my pride and as much as I hate being wrong, you know what, I'm going to stand before God one day. And I go, okay, you know what, I don't want to hold on to that extent to where I have to stand before God and answer to him. But I've got to let go of some of these things. And I'm telling you, the times I've jumped in the deep end, amazing things have happened. The times I've stepped out in faith and really believed to the point of risk, to the point where, okay, I know that's more biblical than the way I've been living, so I'm going to repent. I'm actually going to change my way of living. Man, those have been the most amazing times in my life. My wife and I, you know, we made decisions of, of giving when we read the scriptures and say, wait, he's going to come back in all of his glory with all of his angels, and he's going to split us up, you know, sheep and the goats. And, and it seems like the only thing there in Matthew 25 is about how we cared for the poor. Because that's a true reflection of a believer. It, it's not that those works saved you. But it's, it's the fact that, look, you know what? If you're a, a lover of God, you're going to be a lover of the poor. That, that's just part of our characteristic. That's what the Spirit does in us. He makes us slave to us. When we see those who are starving or no, no clean drinking water, our hearts break. And we, we, like Jesus, go, I want to rescue. I want to do whatever I can to help them. We look in Scripture. We see it all through that book. And so it's like, let's start giving, let's start giving. And people say, wait, wait, you guys. You know, people would ask me. They'd go, well, what if you and your wife give so much that at the end of your life you have nothing left for yourself? I go, that'd be awesome. They go, really? But what if, what if you starve to death? I go, really? In America? I'm not going to go to any of the, the shelters and ask for food. I, I mean, really, are, are we really going to starve to death? You've got to work hard to starve to death in our country. I go, first of all, there's that. Secondly, I go, Jesus promises me that won't happen as long as I'm seeking the kingdom first. I go, but thirdly, let's just say hypothetically. All the shelters are done, you know, and God accidentally forgot that here Lisa and I were seeking his kingdom first and, and we starved. Let's just say, let's just take the most extreme situation that we give away everything to the ministry, to the poor, and my wife and I whittle away, oh, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. We gave away to him and then we die. I go, let's say that happens. I go, what a great way to come into the presence of God. To go, whoops, you know? <laughs> I, maybe I took your word too literally, you know? I, I, you know, I thought you were, you know, about caring for, what a great way to come in the presence of God. No, I gave it all. I'd love that moment. I'd love that moment. What are we afraid of? You know what I'm afraid of? I'm afraid of holding on to too much stuff. And coming before God and going, well, I wasn't sure if you'd come through, so I just kept this storehouse and I kept building bigger and bigger barns. But no, every time we gave away, man, the way that God would respond, just supernaturally. Man, and then, you know, I end up writing this book like five years ago. I don't write. I'd never written. I don't, I, you know, right, I'm Asian. I'm math, you know. SAT, <laughs> you, you know, it's like my math score was, you know, near perfect. My English is like, you know, it's just this thing where you just do what God tells you to do. Anyways, suddenly they're telling me, hey, your book's going to be really successful and looks like there's going to be a lot of people. There's a chance that you may make millions of dollars. And I'm looking at my wife and I'm like, millions of dollars? What, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And, and I said, you know what, if we take this money, we're going to end up buying things that we don't need. We're happy. And we'll regret it for all of eternity. How many times have we bought stuff and go, why did I buy that? What a waste. I go, but if we give it away, we've never regretted that. And for all of eternity, we won't give it. I, I said, let's just sign over all the royalties right now to nonprofits. Let's just sign it all and give it all to the poor so that we can't touch it. Because I go, I, I believe this. And 
And if I really believe this, then let's just, let's just do that. And this amazing thing where millions of dollars starts coming in and, and we're able to build schools, you know, hospitals or whatever, stuff where afterwards we're going to go, yeah, look at that, look at that. I mean, I'm talking about joy here. I'm talking about, you ever been to a, a foreign country and feed a kid who wasn't going to eat unless you gave him that? There's something so amazing in that. It was so amazing. When I came back to my church, after going to Africa the first time, you know, I'm looking at my wife going, gosh, I, I, you didn't go with me, but I'm looking at everything we have, and it's not sitting well with me. And, and she's going, what do you want to do, sell our house? I go, if you don't mind. <laughs> but I'm looking at these kids in Africa, and they're digging through the trash, trying to find anything to eat. And I'm thinking about our two little girls. At that time, we only had two. We have five now. And I, I go, I'm thinking about our two kids, and what would I want someone to do for them? What would I want some rich American to do for them? I'm supposed to love my neighbor like I love myself. Let's get practical here. And the amazing wife, I, and I go, but honey, but I'm not going to have you sell the house. I want you to come to Africa first. I want you to see it because you'll understand once you're there. She goes, no, as much as I love this house, I trust you. And that afternoon, we started looking at trailer parks. There's a woman of God right there who takes the word of God literally and says, no, we're not just going to feel convicted. Oh, those poor Africans. Oh, those poor people in India. No, there's a thing called repentance where you actually do something and you sell and you change. It, it was our church, our church, who, you know, we were about to enter a $20 million building program. And I just said, you know, if, if, if this is really what's going on in the world, how can we spend this much on ourselves? Let's just meet outside. So what if it rains on us? So what if we get wet a little bit? Maybe we'll remember those who don't actually have homes. And maybe we'll actually do, it's, it's about change and to see some of the angry people leave the church and others flood in and go, no, you know what, that's right. I'll sit in the blazing hot sun. I mean, what, what an amazing testimony that would be if people drove by and saw a bunch of believers sitting on a field. I said, what if they saw thousands of people sitting in the rain? They go, what in the world are those people doing? We're saying, you know what, we, we take his word literally. I want to stand before him one day and to see the congregation come alive as we started giving and giving and giving. And to, to go to at, one, one of the most, one of the life-changing moments in my life was getting to Africa and seeing the school that the church had built. I was there earlier when there's just naked kids running around, malnourished, everything else. And then I walk back and I see hundreds of, of little African kids, so beautiful, all in uniform, all getting food, getting vitamins, shoes on their feet, getting educated, singing to the Lord as I snuck into the back of this put together, you know, a throw together little schoolhouse and see hundreds of little kids. I'm just in the back watching them as they're smiling, worshiping God. And the teacher in the front of the room sees me in the back, and she stops everything, which I didn't want her to do, but she goes, hey, listen, stop. Everyone turn around. Look, there's Pastor Chan. I want you to know that every one of you is sponsored by someone from his church. And all these kids start screaming and clapping. And do you know what that feels like? And, and you, you know, people go, well, oh, you're a martyr, you're this. I have not. I, I'm, I'm saying that feeling is better than any car I could buy, any house I could ever live in. It is so much more blessed to give than to receive and to take those leaps and say, no, that's what I want.